The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. You are welcome to this learning session. I am Bo Eric Asa, your physics teacher. We are going to continue with Form 5 Physics. In this lesson, we will begin by looking at the assignment we had during our last lesson. If two bar magnets are placed with their axes parallel to each other and their, and their like face, their like poles face each other, how many neutral points will be created? From the last class, we saw that if two bar magnets are placed with their north pole in one direction and their south poles in the other direction, the field lines will be generated such that they run from the north pole to the south pole. This magnetic flux pattern generates two points one below and the other above which are free from magnetic influence these two points are known as the neutral points so there are two neutral points that will be produced equidistant from the axis of both magnets our lesson for today is going to be looking at the Earth's magnetic field. We're told that the Earth in itself behaves as though it has a bar magnet in its core. In this lesson, we are going to begin with the lesson objectives followed by the prerequisite knowledge that is required of you in order to understand this lesson properly. Then we will move to a practical life situation that this lesson can help us understand or resolve. From there we will get the lesson activities exercises and then we will have a take home assignment. At the end of this lesson, every learner is expected to be able to detect the Earth's poles using a magnetic compass. You are equally expected to be able to define the angles of dip and declination. Draw the magnetic flux pattern of the Earth and know how the Earth's magnetic field is used in navigation. What you need to know 
which will help you to be able to understand this lesson properly include the fact that you must be able to draw magnetic field lines. Also, you need to be able to describe the structure and the use of a magnetic compass. To be able to assess whether you have mastered this prerequisite knowledge required for a proper understanding of this lesson, answer the following questions. 1. Draw magnetic field lines around a simple bar magnet. 2. How can a magnetic compass be used to show the direction of magnetic field lines? Answers. To draw the magnetic field ar around a bar magnet, we simply begin by drawing the magnet and then having a mastery of the fact that the field lines will always run from the North Pole to the South Pole in close loops and not crossing each other. And also, Understanding that the magnetic field strength at the poles is greater than at any other point on the magnet. Two, how can a compass be used to show the direction of magnetic field lines? The compass is placed in the field whose direction is to be determined. The direction in which the north pole of the magnetic needle will point indicates the direction of the field lines because we learned that a magnetic compass always shows the direction in which the field lines move. Real life situation. After a class on plotting magnetic field lines, a student decided to take a white sheet of A4 paper and plot field lines on it using a magnetic compass needle in the absence of any magnet. He discovered that the field lines deviated a bit from the geographic node making an angle theta with any horizontal line drawn on that piece of paper. This student was worried with the following questions. Where are the field lines coming from? The second worry was the fact that define the angle named. What is the name of the angle made between the field lines and the horizontal line on the paper? Introduction. The idea that the earth is magnetized was first suggested by Dr. Williams Gilbert towards the end of the 17th, 16th century after carrying out experiments with spherical lodestone, stone. He said the earth has a magnetic field believed to have been caused by electric currents generated in the Earth's core. The origin of the Earth's magnetism is still not very clear amongst scientists. But broadly speaking, the Earth behaves 
as though it contains a short bar magnet in its core, inclined to a small angle to its axis of rotation with its north pole in the northern hemisphere and its south pole in the with its north pole in the southern hemisphere and its north pole in the southern hemisphere. The inclination of this supposed magnet to the Earth's axis is explained from the fact that a magnetic compass points towards the true north only at certain places on the Earth's surface. Elsewhere, it points either east or west. For example, consider the Earth's surface below. We have the Earth which is spherical in shape. And if we are to consider our cardinal points, the north will be up, the south down, then the east and the west. So the Earth's axis of rotation cuts through the Earth. If a bar magnet, if a bar magnet or a magnetic needle, or better still, a compass, was to be placed at the points A and B, at point A, the north pole of that magnet faces vertically downwards. But at point B, it is the south pole that faces vertically upwards. Beside point A and B, the magnetic compass points in different directions, inclined to an angle to the Earth's axis of rotation. But at point C and D, around the equator, the magnetic compass points equally in different directions with the North Pole up and the South Pole down. Beside the equator, we see the orientation of the compass changing direction and equally in the geographic south it changes direction. With the idea that the magnetic compass shows the direction of the field, we can therefore see that from the south pole, from the southern hemisphere we can trace the path of the field line right across to the northern hemisphere. And on this other side of the Earth's axis, we can trace the field line across to the northern, northern hemisphere. So we have the Earth's magnetic pole in the northern hemisphere and another magnetic pole in the southern hemisphere. But looking at our magnetic compass, if that pole in the southern hemisphere attracts the south pole of a magnetic compass, it therefore means that the pole of the Earth located in the southern hemisphere is the north pole. And therefore, the magnetic north pole of the Earth is found in the southern hemisphere. And the magnetic north pole of the Earth is found in the magnetic south pole of the Earth is found in the northern hemisphere since it attracts the north pole of a magnetic needle. The north magnetic pole. It is that point on the Earth's surface in the northern hemisphere at which the planet's magnetic field points vertically downwards. This occurs close to the geographic north pole and moves over time. The south magnetic pole. It is also that point 
on the Earth's surface in the southern hemisphere, where the planet's magnetic field points vertically upwards. This occurs also close to the geographic south, south pole and moves over time. The Earth's magnetic flux. The Earth's magnetic flux leaves from the magnetic north pole located in the geographic south across to the magnetic south pole located in the geographic north as we can see on this diagram we see the field lines leading from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere that is moving from the magnetic north pole of the earth to the magnetic south pole of the earth so a magnetic compass placed anywhere within this field will always have its north pole pointing towards the north and its south pole pointing towards the south. That is to say that the magnetic north pole of the earth will be attracting the south pole of the magnetic needle and the magnetic south pole of the earth will be attracting the north pole of that same magnetic needle. So the geographic north, the magnetic north pole is in the southern hemisphere while the magnetic south pole is in the northern hemisphere. And we have the geographic north and geographic south poles according to our cardinal point. Plotting the Earth's <coughs> magnetic flux. If the Earth's magnetic field was to be plotted on a piece of paper, just like what the student did in the lab, in the absence of any magnet, it will be shown below. The geographic north points directly up, but when the field lines are plotted, they deviate a bit from the magnetic north, making an angle theta. This angle between the two directions is known as the angle of declination or the angle of variation. So if we have the geographic node, any magnetic needle or pointer will always deviate from that geographic node. And the angle of declination will be this angle between the true geographic node and the direction of the field. magnetic declination. This is the angle or this angle vary all over the world depending on the position of the Earth's surface and changes over time. So it is not constant. Maps of magnetic declination at various points on the Earth's surface are prepared to enhance navigation. Definition of angle of declination. The angle of declination is the angle between the direction of magnetic north and geographic north at a particular point on a horizontal plane. Remarks. We have to remark here that 
The lowercase Greek letter delta is frequently used as symbol for declination. By convention, declination is positive when the magnetic node is east of the true node and negative when it is to the west of the true node as shown in the diagrams below. We see it east of the true node, so delta is positive. And if west of true node, delta is negative. In 1576, Robert Norman, a compass maker, carried out an experiment with a magnetic needle suspended at its center of gravity. In this experiment, he found out that an unmagnetized needle rested horizontally if pivoted at the center. But a magnetized needle dips with its north pole downward, forming an angle theta to the horizontal. This angle he called the angle of dip or the angle of inclination. In Britain, this angle was measured to be 71.5 degrees. Angle of dip. If an unmagnetized needle is pivoted, it rests horizontally. There will be no dip. Mean the angle of dip is zero. But when magnetized, that needle dips downwards, making an angle of theta with the horizontal. This angle is known as the angle of dip or the angle of inclination. In Australia, this south pole of the magnetic needle rather dips downward instead. Hence, the angle of dip varies over the Earth's surface. Definition of angle of dip. The angle of dip is the angle the Earth's magnetic field makes with the horizontal. Variation of dip. The angle of dip is 90 degrees near the geographic poles and zero degree near the equator. As we can see on the diagram below, the magnetic equator lies horizontally and along this line we have two points A and B. If a magnetic needle is placed at the point A and B or compass, it lies vertically with its north pole downwards, making an angle of 90 degrees at the surface. This angle of 90 degrees is the maximum dip at that point. Along the equator, the angle of dip lies parallel to the equatorial line, meaning the angle of dip at that position is zero degrees. So there is no dip around the equator, but maximum dip at the poles. In any other position on the Earth's surface, the angle of dip varies, as we can see. Illustration of magnetic dip and declination. If we are to represent the angle of dip and angle of declination on the same diagram, we will have it as follows. The angle of declination delta is the deviation 
from the geographic north and the angle of dip is the angle that same field makes with the horizontal these two angles are alternate angles so any one of them that you choose will give you the same value remarks positive values of dip angle indicate that the magnetic field of the earth is pointing downwards in the earth at that point where it is being measured the angle of dip is measured accurately using an instrument known as the dip circle how the earth's magnetic field is used in navigation by using a compass navigators are able to determine which direction is north and which is south by simply noting which end of the needle points north if you are not sure of where the geographic node is then you can simply determine it by holding a magnetic compass in your hand flat when the sun is at its highest point then you move out with it the, the end nearest to your body will be the north pole if you are north of the equator but the needle will point towards you and the south end towards the sun if you live south of the equator the south end of the needle will point towards you and the north towards the sun how animals and birds make use of the earth's magnetic field animals also drive to derive two types of information from the geographic the geomagnetic field the first is the direction in which they are facing and the second is where they sit relative to a particular goal examples of animals that use the earth's magnetic field to guide their behavior include birds, bees, whales, and turtles, just to name a few. Back to real life situation. Now, after plotting the magnetic field lines without the presence of any magnet, a student saw field lines on a paper that were deviated from the geographic north and wondered why it should be so. Let's now find out whether this lesson can help answer the questions. Where are the field lines coming from? We see that the field lines were coming from the Earth's magnetic field. What is the name of the angle made between the field lines and the horizontal line drawn on the paper. From the lesson, we see that that angle was known as the angle of dip. Name the angle or define the angle. The angle of dip is the angle between the direction of the Earth's magnetic field and the horizontal. Recall that in this lesson, we have defined the angle of dip as the angle between the earth's field and a horizontal drawn on a piece of paper and that it is plus or no, minus 90 degrees at the poles and 0 degrees at the equator. Also, that the angle of declination is the angle between 
the direction of the magnetic north and geographic north at any particular point on a horizontal plane. Also, we have seen that declination is positive when the magnetic north is east and negative when it is west exercises. The angle between the magnetic north and geographic north is called 2. At the magnetic equator, the angle of dip is answers. The angle is the angle of declination. <clears throat> and the second question, the angle will be zero degrees at the equator. Assignment. A bar magnet is suspended by a thin thread from its center of gravity. State with reason which of its poles dip downwards. We have come to the end of this learning session. See you in the next lesson where we will be treating experiments to identify the poles of a magnet. Una tege si, ma tege yop, una tege minga, ma tege nyum, una tege majang, ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana, ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa tina, bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike, Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen 